So now that we have knowledge of what are value objects, let's move on to entities. I think you all know what entities are and um, I'm not going to go in much detail. Entities are generally an object which can be uniquely identified using an ID or something and they consist of value objects or they generally represent a real world object and they are generally persisted as a row in a DB with a primary key and that ID becomes the primary key and they are typically mutable and they generally implement some business logic based on what they are. Now let's move on to aggregates. So if you want to take away two things from tactical design, that would be value objects and aggregates. So let's see what an aggregate is. When you have the object graph of your project, if the object graph becomes big, it becomes difficult to maintain. Right, so an aggregate is a collection of entities in your object graph which comes under a single transaction boundary. So suppose if you have a customer with some customer information and some address, if some customer info is changed, you might want to change the customer object itself. And suppose you have an order with order info and order items, right? So an order will have many order items and if any of the order items changes, you might want to change the status of the order or maybe total amount of the order. So all these have strict transactional boundaries and they have to be consistent all the time. An aggregate basically controls the change. So these three things and these three things are separate aggregates. And an aggregate always has a root entity. What is root entity here? It is a customer. The root entity here is the order and you will always hold the reference to that root entity and you will never change any part of this aggregate from outside the aggregate boundary because that will keep this in an inconsistent state. So root entity governs the lifetime of other entities in the aggregate. So if you delete the customer, all of this information has to go. If you delete the order, all of these information has to go. And an aggregate is always consistent. So take an example, if customer has updated its address, it should be eventually passed on to order within next 30 seconds. Otherwise, your address won't be changed in the orders. So if you change anything here, this thing has a strict transaction boundary and this should be changed immediately. And you can say to the customer that your information has been changed. And then what you can do is that you can fire a domain event from customer to order so that order updates the address here as well so that you have eventual consistency. So this will be eventually consistent. So other examples of aggregates can be uh, comments on, on a post or maybe question and question detail combined together or a banking transaction or like creating a car with all the engine parts, right? So people who use ORM like Hibernate already use aggregates a lot and even if they don't know it. And when you use one-to-many relationship or many-to-one relationship, you are basically creating aggregates. All right, this was all about aggregates. Now let's move on to repositories and factories. I think you all know what are factories and repositories. They are basically used to handle aggregates. So let's take an example. Suppose you want to cook some pancakes. You have all the ingredients of a pancake and you will be cooking your pancake. Oh, this looks delicious. Anyways, so if you have to do it one time, you will do it yourself because this is pretty easy. But what if you have to create a car and if I give you all the engine parts, that becomes a little tricky, especially if you have to do it again and again. For that, what I would want is that I should have some factory which will create a car out of those engine parts. So basically the ingredients that you have are nothing but entities and values and the thing you are going to create ultimately is an aggregate. So the car is your aggregate and your engine parts are your entities and values. So a factory helps you create new aggregates. Simple enough. If the creation logic is complex enough, you should always use factories to create new aggregates. And then you have repositories. Repositories help you get persisted aggregates. Uh, sometimes I have seen that in some code bases, if you have 20 entities, uh, people have created 20 repositories for all of them. 
you should only create a repository for an aggregate and not for your entities. And repositories are not DAO layers. DAO layers and just fetch raw entities for you. But for binding those entities together to create an aggregate, that takes a repository. And if you are if you have used JP or Hibernate, you already have built-in repositories. You just have to use an annotation and you have your repository with you. I think that will be all for today. And uh, let's see you next time.